Hello everyone, so excited to be with you today. Episode number two today of the PC Pep TV channel, mm -hmm. talking about a very important topic, Which and that is, is depression and prostate cancer. Mm. And I'm very excited to talk about this because we're bringing the scientist and the clinician to talk about a topic that's it's very common to have depression, mm. right, with a prostate cancer diagnosis. Yeah, it makes it sense. And interestingly, what the scientist is going to show us is that men do not experience depression in the same way that women do. And so it often goes yeah. unrecognized, undiagnosed, untreated. And there are and other things you can do about it. Mm -hmm. And it has all these kind of consequences. So we can really actually empower you by thinking about this, recognizing it, and doing something. Yeah, consequences, not just at the oncological, prostate cancer development level, but also your quality of yes. life. Because what kind of life, I mean, if we're gonna have a long life, yeah. we wanna make sure it's a good life. Exactly. And so today's episode is about empowering you, giving you the knowledge and the power to change things in your own life. And so we wanna talk to you a little bit, so I've been doing this kind of research for the past 25 years, and here in our lab at Dalhousie University, five years ago, we started a surveillance program Program where we started asking men questions about how they're doing and so what we found is that men who have a history of prostate cancer diagnosis have between two to three times higher odds of either depression anxiety or both right. compared to men who never had a prostate cancer diagnosis or those who had any other type of cancer diagnosis but not prostate and so we found those results not just here in the maritime drop but then we went to independent sources right. data sources like atlantic path the same relationship yep. the canadian longitudinal study for aging the same relationship and, and so we uncovered a silent epidemic. Yeah, also happening worldwide, people were publishing. Yes. So there was a European study yes. that followed men out for 18 years. And the same type of numbers, like one in five guys mm -hmm. is suffering from mental distress in the long term after prostate cancer. Right. So the question is then, why? What happens during a diagnosis? Right. Why is it that depression and prostate cancer seem to co-occur? Mm -hmm. What are some of the triggers? Well, yeah, the we triggers and risk factors. About. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we found out from science that being of young age like in your 50s, is a for risk. Instance, yeah. yeah, it's a risk factor. Erectile dysfunction. Makes sense. Premature physical changes, and this is such a, an important one, Rob. So what this is about is, you know, when you're in your 50s, you don't expect to have erectile dysfunction. Right. But you don't expect to, to you know, be sad or, or have anhedonia, lack of pleasure. Uh, you know, those sort of things kind of kick in much later. Yeah. And so when you go to bed as a 57-year-old and you wake up as a 75-year-old, Start That's on hormone big. therapy, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you don't have time to adapt right. psychologically, psychologically yeah. to the sudden change that happened to your physical body and to your psychological body as well because, you know, erectile dysfunction in many ways, well, it's something physically you can point yes. to, but it's also something psychological. Yes. And it guides your navigation of your meeting your emotional Changes needs. Your relationships. So it, yeah. yeah, so that can be very traumatic. Yeah. Patients' expectations right. and fears around the, the diagnosis. diagnosis, right? Yeah, suddenly, what's going to happen? Don't know. The unknowns causes a stress, which interestingly also leads to depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Previous trauma, perceived major letdowns, yes. financial difficulties, right. struggling. Yeah. yeah, it develops much more often in African American men and in Caribbean men of African ancestry than in men of any other races. Well, so we're all at risk, and in some sense, we're all at risk as well, right? So Yeah, so the prevalence rates of depression in the prostate cancer population are between 20 to 38%. Yeah. And Fine. some of the brain chemistry that gets altered in this process are, mm. we slow down, we mm. shut down the pleasure pathways, yes, and we experience stress and anxiety. So what happens is we, we tend to engage in stress and anxiety, kind of stay there instead of, you know, the, the normal pathway. More it's path up and down, down up and it's down, like up a, and down. We call it a, an inverted U shape. Up and down, right? Yeah. And, and so the issue is also with how we cope with stress and anxiety when it right. hits. Uh, the majority of us, you know, um, tend to go towards maladaptive coping behaviors. Right. Or we run into depression is the point. It's like if you're at a super high stress level for a long time, it's like the brain shuts down. So let's, let, let's go into the, yeah, let's go into, <laughs> the actual... I was just about to ask you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Rob, as a man, how do you experience? How do men tend oh, to... Yeah. If I was to ask any men, what would they say? Well, you, if you said, what does a depressed person mm. look like? Or what yeah. does a depressed man look like? You think about it like 
the man kind of in bed, kind of can't get out of bed, can't do anything, is kind of withdrawing from life. It's kind of like the shutdown, mm, cocoon shutdown. feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I'm learning is that's not the whole story. That's not the whole story. Yeah, yeah. There are minor nuances to how we experience depression that we're learning. Um, that are there and now we are more careful at identifying them because we know they have consequences so to let, let's just go through very briefly through the definition of a major depressive disorder so what needs to happen is the individual either through questionnaires or direct interviews would have depressed mood you know yes. feeling sad and yeah. let down yeah. uh, and anhedonia which is a decrease in pleasure yeah. plus five of nine factors Th those were two of them the seven more yeah. okay uh, so they are depressed mood diminished interest pleasure unintended weight loss insomnia too much sleep, psychomotor agitation and retardation, fatigue, feelings of worthiness, guilt, diminished ability to think, concentrate, thoughts of death and suicide. Now, what we found out just in the past, I'd say 10 to 15 years, is that while that is true, uh, there is another category of depression and we call it subsyndromal mm. uh, depression disorder, where you have to have a major or you have to have a, a depressive mood and anhedonia. Yeah. You're not enjoying life, but only two, only factors, two factors, two extra factors of the nine. Yeah. And so we're noticing that the aftermath. So when we compare the outcomes between a major depressive disorder and subsyndromal dis depression disorder, two, yeah. Uh, the outcomes are the same, social irritability, household strain, and those are reasons why we want to address this and we want to shed a light on mm -hmm. this issue so you can do something about it rather than just let it there to linger. Social constraints, financial loss or strain, restricted activity, chronic limitation in job functioning, right. bed days, poor health status. Yeah. And now there's more evidence mounting suggesting that subsyndromal depression disorder should actually uh, be a standard in clinical urologic and radiation oncology care settings where we identify those issues and we involve somebody in the in the circle of care to to deal with those issues and either prescribe medication or a program that can perhaps really develop new habits yeah. new life habits that can make a difference in their life of yeah the so let me just summarize that that sometimes the men will run into a depression but they only have some of the signs of the depression and yet if they fall into that category of just some of the signs they have the same kind of health consequences in the long term yeah. so that's why it's like very important to be awake to what are the possible signs mm -hmm. and if you're starting to get you know two three four of those signs then you really need to kind of get some extra help and start really questioning whether you actually have a depression or not. In fact, this is why we developed the PC PEP program. Yes, big picture. To, to deal with those issues and come up with science to back up the development of new habits that can empower you and can change uh, the name of the game. Agreed. Well said. For the better. Okay, so let's have a look at those nine characteristics nine of depression. And as you're listening, obviously you're going to crash, you know, do actually have yeah, this. So. Yeah, yeah. So and we're going to try to shed some light also on those more subtle. Right cues that something is not quite all right and and think of them in terms of that pattern you you pattern you shape pattern that we talked to you about do you or do you not engage in some of those characteristics and seem to stay there because right. that's the issue yeah because most of us will experience them at some point or down. another they go yeah. they come and they go they come and they go but there is no sustainability and consistency mm. to them typically oh. they say that yeah. uh, you have to have those symptoms for like two plus weeks what Gabriella is saying is like you're stuck up top mm, in a bad mm. symptom. That's a way of being for you. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And have a look at them because a lot of them are very subtle. Yeah. So the first one is depressed mood. So what is a symptom of depressed mood? Right. You could, you could feel it in a different way. So you feel sad mm. or empty, uh, like demoralized uh, and hopeless. Yeah. Often you may say tearful. Well, people may identify you're like crying you know, mm. when, when you don't even understand why you're crying, for instance. Other ways of depressed mood may manifest as avoidance of mm. issues, mm. you know, going in your men cave or everything is fine. Everything is fine. Well, yeah. can you think of a, of a day or a situation where you weren't OK? No, I can't think of any. Everything is fine. Right. The type C That's coping type maladaptive C. behavior yeah. is someone that doesn't have much insight about what's going on in here, but mm. also what's going on with others. And it always seems to be concerned about 
about external events mm. and descriptive external events rather than internal yeah. states of being. Having no feelings. I would also say that sometimes in men, the um, emotional state actually comes out in physical sensations. So mm. it's like physical symptoms, like for instance, aches and pains, like the arthritis really kind of flares. Yeah kind of headache, uh, irritable bowel. I mean, you hear erectile dysfunction as well, but I mean, that has also to do with prostate cancer. Yeah, and one thing that is somewhat specific to depressed mood, Rob, at least research shows, is that our mood is not something that dwells in our consciousness as much as in our unconsciousness. So most of the time, those symptoms that we're talking about, they dwell in the background of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So somebody really has to say, oh, Rob, you really look down today, mm -hmm. or, or boy, you seem to be ruminating on the same right. issue. Um, uh, or for you to start thinking, well, do I actually ruminate on the same issue? Right. Or um, am I you know, demoralized? Uh, am I hopeless most of the yeah. time? And, and that's, that's, that's a question that only you can answer for yourself. You know, to what extent do you tend to go in those states and get stuck there mm -hmm. rather than you know, experiencing yeah. them and that they go away and so on? Yeah, so your partner might be able to identify that for yes. you. So. Yes, yes. So then the next episode is depressed mood that can come out in lots of different ways, but you yeah. also usually it's like you've lost your interest in the things that you mm -hmm. usually would enjoy, mm -hmm. right? And so, Anhedonia, that's yeah. right. And that could be anything, playing tennis, uh, yeah, you hobbies, know, um, sports. hobbies, um, uh, having sex or, exp sure. and, and there's yeah. a difference between sex and intimacy, you know, the, mm. the love making mm. is not the same thing with the act of actual copulation, mm. uh, you know, uh, so love making is about discovering your lover as a mm. blind man does. Mm. So it's that aspect of, of yeah. sexuality that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, and that social connection. And yeah. Um, the other one that can kind of, for men as well, is a loss of satisfaction in their work, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, making your work could be meaningful to you and now you're kind of withdrawing and just that hasn't had the same kind of a spark for mm -hmm. you. So. Very good point. A significant unintended weight loss right. or decrease or increase in appetite. It's funny, so it can be, you know, you lost interest in food or you can crave the sweet mm. stuff. So that's number three. Yeah. Number four. Insomnia or sleeping too much right. every day. Yeah, the whole, this whole system is shut of bed. down. Uh, yeah, so it makes sense. Number five, this is an important one. So depression can come out in both in agitation, that can come out in lots of different ways, or depression. Mm -hmm. like, and that can happen at both the kind of a physical perspective and it can happen at a mental perspective. So let's kind of flush that out. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of physical agitation is constantly, you know, being on the go and doing something at all points, not sitting down, not taking time to just think and um, contemplate, reflect on what happened, not, 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 ha not taking the time to integrate things. Right. But then there is the mental agitation, mm. really always planning, always, let's go into the next thing. You yeah. barely, you, you just haven't even finished your vacation and you're planning the next, or you're mm. planning what you're gonna do the, the day yeah, after and so that, on. Yeah. And that kind of, it's, we, we call it the, the planning stuck up, phase where you just can't you, you, you can't get out of it you're, mm. you're stuck in it then there's the issue of nervousness right and and that happens in lots of different ways so um you know it's kind of this non-stop it kind of, sometimes it comes out of like hand wringing you know, pulling on the clothes it, mm. it can be just like a nervousness unable to kind of relax for mm -hmm. periods of time mm -hmm. uh, retardation which um, if a slow slowing down can often come out through speech mm -hmm. so physically like starting pausing the content can get very narrow slow thinking you're not kind of you know, making mm -hmm. the same attention to detail etc cetera, etc cetera. pauses before answering soft speech reduced speaking reduced mm -hmm. content variation right. yeah number six Oh, fatigue or loss of energy nearly every day. Yeah. Being tired on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, even things like, you know, having to put your clothes on, it's such a drag. Mm -hmm. uh, hard much. to get going. Yeah. Um, just hard to get. It, it was way more energy than you have type thing. Yeah. Just even simple things. Yeah. If, if having a psychological feeling of heaviness and right. just your, your, your physical body is it's 10 times heavier than normal. Right. Number seven, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. Mm. And again, a kind of constant feeling. And yes, there's, you know, if you do something stupid or silly, yes, it's appropriate to feel guilt, you know, but it's, it would be like having that go on for days and days and days, like mm -hmm. way more exaggerated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Misinterpretation of neutral or trivial uh, events, right. self-blame for, for illness. illness. Yeah. 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 
uh, others matter, self doesn't matter right. equally. Again, this is part of that type C maladaptive coping behavior where right. you're constantly um, thinking that other people's behavior is your responsibility. Right. So you ought to do whatever it takes for you to fix that or support that in some way. Yeah. Number eight, again, is this inability to think and concentrate, mm -hmm. uh, kind of indecisiveness. So easily distracted, you're just not functional, just not getting things done mm -hmm. because of it. And then your memory fades as well. Yeah, and a, and a great um, example here is inability to um, complete previously manageably yeah. complex tasks. intellectual yeah. tasks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number nine, which is the last one and very mm -hmm. serious one, is yes. the kind of thoughts of death or suicide. You know, a person who's depressed might say, quotes, others would be better off if I were dead, for instance. And especially if you're thinking of suicide or making a plan, then obviously you need to get into your doctor ASAP or the emergency department, etc. Yeah, that's, that's very yeah. important. Actually, yeah. prevalence rates for suicide among men are much higher than those of the general population. Yeah. Okay, so those are the nine that we have. So what do you do? So yeah. see a specialist, especially if you're having suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. right away reach out for help, hands down. And on our we own website, we have resources for men and we have um, a 911 line for men experiencing suicide. Yeah. For maladaptive coping style, see a, an experienced and certified clinical psychologist. Right. If you can't function on a day-to-day -day basis, just make sure that you reach out for professional yeah. help. And if you're really withdrawing and lost your ability, to connect with life in general, then it is probably worth getting on some medication. For yes. Instance. Yes. Uh, and there's, there's nothing bad about that. Your chemistry has changed mm -hmm. in your brain. Sometimes a little bit of medication for you know a few, a few months can kind of get you back going again. You work on the psychological stuff and you empower yeah. yourself. So. Especially if you're working with a professional at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Exactly. That seems to be. Yeah. extremely helpful but think about it the PC pet program was designed specifically to address mental health issues and That's every right. component of the program really aims to that yeah it's, the exercise the kicking in of endorphins yes, we know from yes. science it works it works it makes you more pro-social which means yes. you want to connect with other people which That's is right. a really important part of you know working with depression and we're hoping that by forming this community we're encouraging one another you know it takes a community to raise a child it takes a community to change our habits and yes. how how we do things to make time for ourselves yes. for things that matter and that in, they improve our quality of life strength training strength training actually it's it's interesting that when you engage those core muscles those big muscles the muscles themselves actually release like hormone type chemicals called the molecules of joy that again go up to your brain really it's probably the best way to uh, work with the depression other than the medications exercise strength training super important and as we get older it's better to ex to, 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 to engage in strength training yes. because of our bones health. yes all the rest of it yeah, yeah. relaxation technique right and we have the <laughs> HIV, <laughs> HIV <laughs> monitors. Look at this. this we use this them morning. every morning. Yes, you got a five zero this morning. So, um, but the point is, practicing your relaxation technique, uh, empowering the left prefrontal lobe, actually helps with emotional regulation. And the data is very strong. Practicing that uh, relaxation changes your brain, changes mm -hmm. your chemistry. You know, it, it really helps. Yes, and especially when we align it with with pleasurable mm -hmm. memories yes. in our lives. Things when we actually experience love, whatever shape or form that may take, whether that means, you know, holding a baby in your mm -hmm. arms for the first mm -hmm. time or uh, petting your dog or your cat mm -hmm. or going for a, a, a run with your lover or holding yeah. hands, yeah. kissing someone and really enjoying Hanging it. Hanging out with your grandkids. Yes. Yeah, I'll be back. Yes, exactly. The other idea around this program is that mm -hmm. inflammation is not good for your body right so oftentimes depression anxiety causes inflammation and we can decrease the inflammation in our body by having an anti-inflammatory diet so that's important it actually changes the chemistry so lots of different ways for you to make a difference and yet another way to decrease inflammation is through social connection mm, you know, find your people yeah. hang out yeah. with your people and yeah. and support those connections Hang out with us. I think. Yes. That's it. <laughs> Come out to the monthly video conference. Absolutely. So, yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, we hope that you yeah. found today's presentation helpful. Yeah. We try to share with you some of the knowledge that we have with respect to this condition. It's a it's a tricky one, and especially in challenging times. Yeah. You know, those behavior can sneak up on us. Yeah. 
and, and almost go in our blind spots that we can't see them. So with, we hope with a conversation like this yes. that we're opening the discussion yeah. as to, you know, what are some of those symptoms? Am I experiencing them? How often? How do I get away from them? Or what is it that I have to look at not to have them? Right. What am I avoiding? Yeah. What, in what Am I in some sort of denial? If so, let me take a look at this. Is, you know, a lot of the time it's like, remember when we used to tell our kids uh, that when they were scared of the monster that is underneath the bed? We'll, we'll take them with us and say, okay, let's find the monster. Let's look at let's it. And look. we look, you know, we pull the sheets up and there's no monster. The monster yeah. goes away. Yeah. So sometimes in life, we just have to look at things look at and, and say, okay, let me deal with this. Perfect. Let me not deal with it and make a huge difference in your life. So. And we're here for you. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful month.